this modern society where all the facilities there, but mental level, too much stress, too much worry. And ruthless sort of competition brings suspicion, distrust. So, even within one family, uh, distrust. First, I think, uh, uh, for a certain time, very happy. Then, eventually, distrust. Both sides. Too much self-centered attitude, then difficult, isn't it? So, the family problems, individual problems, uh, there are many case, uh, cases of depression, cases of loneliness increasing, suicide also increasing. So, the material level, very good. So, but these things, I think these cases and these cases or these events, shows us material value alone, there's limitation. So, so there are something lacking, so that uh, I think we need a specialist like you and you, these, these people, you see, more study, more research work, and then make concrete sort of ideas or proposals. So the work that we and others have been doing is predicated on a critical insight in modern science, the insight concerning neuroplasticity. Our brains are constantly changing, constantly being shaped by the forces around us. But we have typically very little awareness of what those forces are. Our brains are changing wittingly or unwittingly. Most of the time it's unwittingly. Most of the time we're not aware and we also have little control over those forces. And the invitation in the work that I'm sharing with you today is that we can actually take more responsibility for our own brains by transforming our minds. <clears throat> Have you ever trained your mind? Research from neuroscience <clears throat> leads us to understand that there are two fundamentally different kinds of learning. And it doesn't take much to start these mechanisms in the brain to change. So, we can do this when we're doing other things. We can do this while we're commuting. We can do this as we're literally brushing our teeth. We can do this as we're having our first cup of coffee or tea in the morning. We can do this as we're walking. This can be incorporated in routines of our daily life. We can cultivate a strong sense of purpose. We can reduce distraction and we can increase productivity and focus. And I'd like to end with just a one minute short period of practice to give you an experiential taste of this. So if you all just sit for a moment, put down your pens and devices, and I invite you to bring a loved one into your mind and your heart. You can leave your eyes open or closed. And for those who are viewing this online, please share this one minute with us. And as you bring this loved one into your mind and your heart, cultivate the strong aspiration that they be happy and be free of suffering. And they share the same wish for happiness and the same wish to be free of suffering as all human beings. And you can envision a time in their life when they may, be, may have been having some difficulty. And you can say a simple phrase in your mind, May you be happy, may you be free of suffering. And simply notice whatever may come up for you. And then we can do this for many categories of people, including a difficult person. So I invite you to join us on this journey, and the very future of humanity, we think, depends on it. Thank you very much. You see, without a training, even you cannot utilize, you see, your finger properly. Once you train uh, properly, then small, small things with, you see, very big uh, uh, finger can handle very well. Human mind as such, uh, at, without training, feels, seems very difficult, almost impossible. But through, you see, uh, gradual training, step by step, 
you can you can do these things so that is one of the um, one of the good quality of human consciousness sometimes human con- generally human consciousness is very um, i mean creative and also sometimes troublemaker but if you train properly that will be uh, very nice and very useful like a real jewel <laughs>